it's a 40% down payment of 194,000, not a mortgage. 40% down payment for the mortgage. Sorry. There we go. What's up guys and welcome to this week's McInnes Marketing Minute. Um, you'll notice that we're not from the rooftop today, unfortunately not. Why are we not from the rooftop, Jay? We needed this beautiful screen to go into the details we need to today. And unfortunately we're not in the sun because it is perfectly sunny outside. So it would be a good roof day, but not today. That's right. So we needed this board behind us. So basically what we're doing guys is we're going to go through a bit of the investing side of things. If you've been following us the last few weeks, months, you would have seen that briefly here and there we've touched on investing in real estate as an option for you. And so now we're actually going to explore that and we're going to break that down as to how to, I want to say, go through step one of finding out whether it's going to be a good investment for you. Now, real estate investment is not always going to be right for you at this time and place uh, based on how much you have to put down, based on what your cash flow is and whatnot. But this is a good process to go through just to find out if right now it's going to be kind of the right step for you to take. And Jay, you can talk about more about comparing to other investments. Yeah, so what we're doing here is we're breaking it down into four steps. And at the end of this, we're getting to the cash on cash return on this said investment. You can use this for, we'll say, quadrant strategy for any piece of real estate. Uh, you may just be switching up a few of the points in the quadrants, which we'll go to. But at the end of this, you're going to get the same thing, the cash on cash return. And what that means is the cash return you're going to be getting on the cash you put in to the investment. Yeah, so we'll come up with a percentage at the end for you and then you can then take that percentage and you can compare that to your options in stocks, bonds, however you want to look at investing and you can make the right decision of whether investing in real estate is the right one for you now. So we are predominantly Vancouver Realtors, so of course we're going to plug Vancouver Real Estate, but this is a basis that you can use wherever you are. So whether you're in Alberta, whether you're in BC, whether you're in Saskatchewan, Ontario, all across the globe, in fact, wherever you are, you can use this to kind of get a bit of a basic understanding as well. So I think without further ado, point one, I mean, just probably just to point this out, as I said, we are Vancouver Realtors, so we've actually taken this on a real life example right now. This is a unit. Uh, 60663 Keitha Place, which is currently on the market for 485000 here in Vancouver. It's an entry level home, so it's a, a good judgment, I would say, that somebody's going to be looking at this as a potential investment property. Um, so we've used the figures from this. So we're going to look at income first and foremost. So rental income, what can you charge a tenant a month to live in the property? Then we're going to look at other forms of income. So on here we have storage income and parking income. So a lot of people will just include the storage and parking in the entire rent. Um, some people will rent it out and then separately rent out their storage and parking as well. That's an option for you. So for here, we've assumed that your rental income can be 2,150. You can garnish $25 a month for the storage and an extra 100 bucks a month for parking, which is, these, these figures are pretty reflective of the Vancouver market, I would say. Yeah. And so that means you have a total monthly income of 2,275 bucks. So keep that number in mind. We move down to the expense column. So in this category, we're breaking everything down at this stage to the month, and then we will collectively bring this together for uh, an annual number at the end here. So on this particular prop property, again, taxes, uh, property taxes, $96 a month. Uh, property insurance, $50 a month. Strata fees here are $313 a month. Uh, vacancy costs. So what I like to do here is put a 5%, that's 5% of the, sorry, rental income potential in to have a little nest egg in case you have any vacancy in the future. I don't think it's safe to assume that we're going to have uh, the property rented from day one till the last day we own it. So putting a little nest egg aside for those vacant months will help. Uh, so I've used a number of 5% here, which comes to 108 a month. Repairs. There's always something that's going to go wrong if it's as small as light bulbs or getting a plumber in or anything like that. Again, you want to have a little nest egg put aside. I like to select 50 a month for a property of this size um, just to start mounting up there so you've got that fund ready when needed. Capital expenses. This is obviously a condo, so we're part of a condo development and a strata. Uh, capital expense coverage, 
100 a month, I like to put this aside in case there's any capital expenses uh, to the building. So any assessments that all the owners get voted into. So you've got that amount sitting there waiting so you don't blow your entire income for the year on an assessment that creeps up on you. So 100 a month in the nest egg for that. Uh, property management, usually we like to do 10%. There's a large variety of uh, different property management coverage you can get. Uh, I've opted for 10% here. I haven't used it though at all. Um, I just use that as kind of a benchmark number. We've done zero, so we're assuming that the owner of this property is in Vancouver, can get in there and change light bulbs themselves and negotiate trades that may be needed. So no management fee there. So collectively, we're at 717 a month for those numbers. Now, the mortgage. To break this investment even, so it's not negatively cash flowing, I've picked the amount of 40% down, a little bit higher than typical, but that 40% down on the mortgage, which is $194,000 down on a purchase price of four eighty-five, dollars which this unit is currently listed at, we'll just pick that list number as the, uh, the break even, or the purchase number, 40% um, down gives you fourteen thirty-six. dollars a month as your mortgage payment. So collective expenses in this case, twenty-one fifty-three a month. Yeah, so before we move on to the next one, guys, like we kind of said, the real estate investment may not be the right time for you right now. And so a lot of people will not be able to have this 40% um, straight away or maybe in another year or two or five years. So this could be one of the things to look at overall because like Jay said, in order to make this cash flow positive, this is the minimum amount there in which we needed to come up with. So something to bear in mind. So we'll move on next to cash flow. So anyone who's ever done anything investments wise, read any of the books at all, simple, you want your assets to outweigh your liabilities. So your total monthly income, $2,275 minus your total monthly expenses of $2,153, this number right here, brings you to a total monthly positive cash flow of $122. So obviously that's monthly, so we times that figure by 12, and our total annual cash flow is $1,464. Now, remember that number. The last block here is the cash on cash return. So this is where we get to the bottom of what the actual return amount is on the money you're putting into this investment. So again, a 40% down payment on this is $194,000. Your property transfer tax, 1% on the first 200, 2% on the balance of the purchase price, total 7,700. Your rehab budget, again, if you're purchasing this, it needs a fresh coat of paint and maybe some repairs done uh, of, let's say, a thousand bucks just to pick an even number up front. We'll add that in. Inspection, property inspection, which we always recommend, of course, roughly $600 for that, third party peace of mind. And then the conveyancing of the deal um, with your notary, for example, is $800 we've got here. So collective cash in, total investment, $204,100. Now to get the final percentage here, we're taking the annual cash flow, which Ben just worked out up here, $1,464. We're gonna divide that by this total investment amount, 204,100, and we're gonna get a very small number. We're then gonna times that number by 100 to get our percentage here. So we're slightly under 1%, we're slightly over break even at 0.7% cash on cash return. So you're getting a 7% return on, or sorry, a 0.7% return on your money in of this investment. Yeah, so once you have that figure, guys, you can then talk about whether the real estate is the right option to go for. Don't forget as well, that's a starting cash, ugh, cash return, 0.7%, because of course, typically in Vancouver, rent goes up every single month. I do not know how it works in England, but rent here does not go up monthly. I meant yearly, my bad. Year after year. I meant yearly, I meant yearly, I meant yearly, yearly. Oh, fuck. Oh, for crying out loud. The amount that you paid for the property is not going to go up. And then obviously the more that you start applying to your principal and bringing down that mortgage, that rate is gonna go up pretty fast, I think, once you get the ball running. And so of course, then once you paid off, you can take a massive chunk of uh, a massive chunk of your cost out, and then that and then that rate goes up substantially as well. So again, it is a long-term investment. It's not a quick flip. You know, take it for a year, make a ton of money, and then move. But this is just a good foundation and a good step one to go by, just to see if real estate investing is the right option for you right now. So, 
sums us up. That's it. That's the basic way to look at it. We're going to have a link to this in the comments below so you can crunch through these numbers yourself and then apply them to any potential investment properties you may be looking at. There are a number of different layers beyond this you can go, which we'll talk about later, but this is the foundation to get to that uh, cash on cash return. It's a new shirt. It's old, but I'm bringing it back and revitalizing it. It's like a children's nursery wool. It's a fresh look with a matching tie with different hues of green. Okay, after that, we're out. See you next week, guys. Bye-bye.